Some people say that cats aren't wild, that they are completely domesticated because they live indoors. So they need different food. They need an indoor formula of food. But compared to dogs, cats have only been domesticated for a very short minute. Hey friends, it's Jess and Jericho, and I included studies and everything that I'm talking about in the description below, so you can take a look at those afterwards and read about it, but it's very interesting. So a group of scientists have traced back the domestication routes of our furry feline friends by analyzing the DNA of ancient felines. It concluded that they descended from a Middle Eastern wild cat, also known as Felis sylvestris, which is interesting, kind of feline and sylvester. <laughs> and I think this started around 7,500 years ago in the Near East when people started building communities in the Fertile Crescent. So humans started farming, they had crops, and those crops brought rodents and other pests, and those rodents and other pests brought the cats. So this was a nice symbiotic relationship. The humans were like, cool, free pest control, and the cats were like, Cool, easy dinner. And Egyptians kind of made having a cat a fad, and that led to the second wave of domestication all across Europe. And at this point, sailors were already bringing cats onto their ships, again, for the free pest control. So essentially, cats domesticated themselves because they liked the free dinner, and humans liked the free pest control. And another group of researchers wanted to figure out what is the ideal diet, what is the evolutionary diet of cats, because we technically don't really know unless we're surveying them 24-7. You know, the cats in their natural habitat, they're free living, free roaming, they have free choice to what they eat. And in modern times, we can get to know what their diet is like by studying the contents of their stomach. But fossils of, you know, older cat remains don't still have the food left in their stomach. So these researchers studied the stable isotopes of carbon and nitrogen, both of which are found in bone collagen, and bone collagen can survive through burial and fossilization. So the scientists found a little bit in cats, but not as much compared to humans and dogs and other animals that are eating higher amounts of grains. But since they were finding a little bit in it inside the cats, they concluded that the cats were eating animals that consumed a high grain diet. So things like rodents, voles, birds, all of that. So the scientists concluded that cats have kind of a synthrope opportunistic hunting ability, meaning that they rely on humans for food, but not directly relying on the human food scraps. They rely on the human food scraps to attract rodents and other animals that the cat eats. So they aren't eating the human food scraps, they're eating the pests that the human food scraps attract. So they concluded that cats are obligate carnivores and they choose to eat whole prey, rodents, birds, rabbits, insects, eggs, you know, reptiles, depending on where they live. But those are the main prey that they eat. So now let's talk about the difference between the cat's natural diet, whole prey, and the most popular pet food, kibble. So right off the bat, the number one difference is the moisture content. Whole prey is around 70 to 80 percent moisture. All mammals are about 70 to 80 percent moisture and kibble is only 10% moisture. Since cats have evolved eating a high moisture diet, they naturally have a lower thirst drive. So right there, just by moisture basis alone, kibble is not appropriate for cats because you go from 70 to 80% moisture down to 10% moisture. And I know I hear you saying my cat drinks plenty of water, but the average cat that eats dry food only would have to consume over eight ounces of water every single day just to stay hydrated. I explain all of this in a separate video. I'll put that in the top right corner and in the description below. The next major difference is the ingredients <laughs> when we compare whole prey to kibble. So whole prey is muscle meat, organs, and bones, as well as skin, blood, connective tissue, fur, feathers, and it's roughly around 2% carbs on a dry matter basis, mainly coming from the stomach contents of prey, since cats eat mainly herbivores. There's going to be a little bit of plant material in the stomach of prey. Kibble, on the other hand, the average is 33% carbohydrates on a dry matter basis, and I've even seen it as high as 49%. And these starchy and carbohydrate-rich ingredients are required in kibble because it's cooked and pressurized, 
And the starchy ingredients hold all the other ingredients together. And that's what gives you that kibble shape. If there were no starches and carbs, all of the ingredients would just fall apart. A lot of kibble is also very low in meat-based protein. And if you don't understand AFCO guidelines, their product name rules, that you won't really understand this. So just real quick as a reference, the product name rules tell us how much of the highlighted ingredient is actually in the product. So for example, if you have chicken dinner, that word dinner means there's between 25 and 94.9% chicken. But if you have a product that says with chicken, that minimum requirement goes down to 3% chicken and it's less than 25% because if it was more than 25%, the product would say chicken dinner. Further, chicken flavor, the minimum requirement of chicken goes down to 0%, and it's less than 3% because of the with rule. Now, I'm, I hear you saying, but byproducts are in cat food, and byproducts are organs and bones, and aren't those super nutritious? That's included in whole prey. Yeah, in an ideal world, byproducts would mean organs and bones, but AFCO also states that byproducts are essentially leftovers from the human food production industry. Now, I can go to my grocery store and get pigtails and pig feet and cow tongue and kidney and liver and gizzards. So what kind of leftovers of organs and bones are actually going in cat food if I can buy all of those organs and bones fit for human consumption at my grocery store? And again, with kibble, it's cooked and pressurized, then it goes into the bag and then it goes to the store and then it's sitting on the shelf for who knows how long before you actually buy it. Whereas with whole prey, mainly cats hunt and catch and kill their prey and then they eat it fresh. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is to feed as close as possible to the evolutionary diet, minimal processing, minimal synthetic supplementation. You know, of course, supplements are necessary to fill in nutritional gaps, but we shouldn't rely on a, you know, ingredients list of 62 <laughs> added supplements. You know, the main nutrition should come from fresh meat, organs, and bones. And you can check out this playlist right over Mia for everything that you need to know to get your picky cat from whatever he's eating now to the best that you can for your situation. Thanks for watching.